going to be on your test. I can't tell you which one, but one of them will be on your test. Do you understand that? Yeah. You'll probably have other proofs. You have to look at the test more, and I'll tell you more tomorrow. But I know that one of the theorem proving proofs, so one of the theorem or postulate proofs that we're proving, um, will be on your test. Okay, so we're going to prove those theorems. You can't prove a postulate, so that's a joke. You can only prove theorems, so that one definitely won't be on there. Um, but one of the theorems you are going to have to prove on your own on the test. So just be ready for that, all right? You might have another proof with that. I'll look at the test and let you guys know on Friday, okay? Um, okay, so we are going to prove the vertical angles theorem. So vertical angles are congruent. We've done this proof before. This is not a new proof. But because we're proving that, we cannot use vertical angles. This was on your last test, by the way. This proof was. So whichever theorem you're trying to prove, you cannot use. So you're going to start with your two columns here. So again, if you're proving that theorem, you can't use the vertical angle theorem. But if we were not using proving the vertical angle theorem, you could use it in a different proof. Okay? So we're proving that theorem, so you cannot use that word. Got it? Now... Um, we've done this proof before. This is not a new proof. So we're going to start with this one, and then we'll get through some of the other ones here. So number one, what did we always write down first, guys? So line M and N intersect at point P. Okay, you're trying to prove, we're trying to get to 1 and 3 being congruent here. 1 and 3 being congruent here. Remember, the first thing you need to look at is in the given information, is there any words that you can define? Can you define any of those words there? I mean, you know what intersecting means. That's not going to help us, right? But there's nothing like midpoint here or that, you know, other words like perpendicular or stuff like that, parallel, that you would have to prove, okay? So we can't use that. So then you have to go to your diagram and pull things from your diagram. What can you pull from this diagram? What can you pull from this diagram? Jordan? But we can't use that because that's what we're trying to prove. You are not wrong, but that, since that's what we're trying to prove, we can't use that. So what's another thing you can use from here? Sophia? There's linear pairs. So we want to get 1 and 3 equal to each other. So we want to do linear pairs with 1 and 3 involved. So give me a linear pair with 3 involved. 3 plus 2 is 180, right? What's another linear pair with 1? 1 plus 4. Now, is there any overlap with 1 plus 2, or 3 plus 2 and 1 plus 4? No. So I'm going to write the first one down that we said. So we said the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees by the linear pair postulate. So then somebody else said that um, 1 plus 4 are also a linear pair. That's great, but is there any overlap in order to get rid of that 3 that we don't need? So what could you do instead? Or, sorry, the 2 is what we don't need. Yeah, so we can add 1 and 2, and then there's overlap. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees by the linear pair postulate. guys so you've used you've exhausted everything you've used your diagram you've used your given information so we look for substitution next is there any substitution that can happen what do they both equal so aren't those two expressions on the left side the same so isn't one plus or three plus two and one plus two the same so the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two by substitution
you guys see now? What do you guys see now? You see something that's the same on both sides, don't you, Ayana? Is that why you decided to subtract? So which, which one are you subtracting? Good, the measure of angle two. So we're subtracting the measure of angle two on both sides to get the measure of angle three equal to the measure of angle one by subtraction property of equality. What, who remembers the theorem you used to be able to say angle one is congruent to angle three? Who remembers what that is? Definition of congruent, not segments. These are angles, yeah. Okay, let's kind of talk through this proof real quick again. So I can write a few notes next to it. Pull up a different color here. Okay, so the first thing we did is we said, okay, are there words to define in the given? And we said, no. So then you go to the diagram. So both of these pieces of information came from the diagram. So if you come back and look at this proof, you know where it came from. This came from the diagram. All right? It did, wasn't something given to you. You come back and look at this proof. You know that that was from the diagram. All right? Um, now, we used substitution. Which two did we substitute? Well, we substitute it from 2 and 3, so those steps 2 and 3, because they both equal 180, right? Do you guys see that? Okay. And then I think the rest is pretty self-explanatory. But just so if you were to come back and look at this, you could see that there. Mariah? Um, since it says measure of angle 3 plus measure of angle 1, wouldn't you use the symmetric property? You probably should have done that, but if you don't, I don't care. At this point, it's not a huge deal. So if you say, it, like if you did like a step 6 that said the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3, symmetric, and then did the definition of congruent segments, that's fine. Okay. Not a huge deal if you don't, though. I think that's pretty, you no know, obvious for most of you guys. All right, when you're ready, go ahead and flip to the next one. Time to prove some theorems here. Okay, so we're proving the alternate interior angles theorem that says if two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles is congruent. So which words can we not use for a, a reason in this one then? Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so you can't use alternate interior angles because that's what you're proving. So we cannot use alternate interior angles. We can use anything else on this front page to prove it, but not alternate interior angles because that's what you're proving. So I'm going to give me you the um, given information up front here. And we are trying to prove, we are trying to get to 2 and 8. So these are the two angles we're trying to get to. Do you guys see that? So do we need to define parallel? Is there anything you can say with parallel, really? No, not really, right? So the given information doesn't give us much. But we can use our diagram to get other information. So what information do you guys see here? What information do we see here? Give me anything you can pull from the diagram. I'm just going to write it off to the side. Give me anything you can pull from the diagram. Somebody, give me something you can pull from the diagram. And remember, we're trying to get to 2 and 8, so make sure they involve something with 2 and 8. Does that make sense? I got it. You can't say that. That's what we're trying to prove. <laughs> You're right, but we can't say that yet. Yeah. Sophia. Uh, so we know that measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180 degrees because of consecutive interior, right? 
This is not inappropriate, yet, so just listen for now. We're just writing down information. Tucker. Measure of angle 2 equals measure of angle 6. Why does the measure of angle 2 equal the measure of angle 6? Because of the cor corresponding I'm just going to shorthand that. Okay, so we have some stuff going on up here that looks good so far. It would be really nice, do you guys see this so far, if we could substitute these in for each other and get something to cancel out, right? Because aren't we trying to get that 8 and 2 are the same? Do we know anything about 5 and 3 being the same, not using alternate interior angles, though? They're alternate interiors, so we can't do that yet, can we? But I can do this. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Why is angle 1 congruent to angle 3? Vertical. Did you say triangles? No. Oh, I thought I heard triangles. I was like, what? Um, and we know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. Why is angle 1 congruent to angle 5? Corresponding. So why can I say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 5? Why am I allowed to say that now? Just using this information here. Why can I say that? What do they both have in common? What do they both share? Angle. Which angle do they both share here? They both share one. So aren't these, don't these fourths be congruent? Because if this is 20 and this is 20, well then this is 20 and then that's 20. Do you guys see that? So that's the transitive property there. Then, and this is not the whole entire thing, or just, I'm just put transitive prop. That's not the whole thing, but do you now see that we could substitute 5 in for this and then subtract out from here? Okay, I know this is a lot, but I figured this was better than putting it all into the proof from the beginning. Do you guys see that? You're going to have to pull information and see what attaches to the other. So which, one, which piece of information are we not going to use up there? Even though it's true, which one are we not going to use in our proof? That's up there in that line there. What, which one of those pieces, those one, two, three, four, five, six lines, will we not use in our proof? What does not matter to us? Two and six, two and six right? That doesn't help us with our proof. Although it's true, and it's really good information, that's just not going to help us with the way we're doing our proof. This is not the only way to do the proof, by the way. Okay, so let's start. We are going to say angle one is congruent to angle three. And we just said that's because of vertical angles. So that's the vertical angles theorem. So you see I'm just pulling stuff off the board over there. I'm going to say angle 5 is congruent. Sorry, angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. And we said that's because of their, the corresponding angles. So again, I'm just using the words up here. So that's a postulate. So that would be the corresponding angles postulate. And then we're going to say angle 3 is congruent to angle 5 by the transitive property. You cannot use substitution until they are equals. So we need to change angle 3 congruent to angle 5 into an equals problem. So the measure of angle 3 equals the, angle, the measure of angle 5. Who remembers what the reason is for that? Who remembers what the reason is from switching from congruence to equals? We used it in the last one. Definition of, if they're not segments, definition of congruent angles. Okay. So we're getting there. Again, this is not the only way to do this. This is just the way you guys saw it. So we used all this information. Do you guys agree? 
Okay, so now we're going to use our consecutive interior angles here and here. And I'm just going to put them in one step because they both have the same reason. So that's the consecutive interior angles theorem, and I'm going to add those together. So I have the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180. And the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 8 equals 180. And that is the consecutive interior angles theorem. So all of this stuff we have here is from the diagram. All of that stuff we pulled from the diagram. We wrote it off to the side first, but we pulled it all from the diagram. So I'm going to let you guys catch up there, and then we're going to keep going. We're not done yet. We're almost there. So we know we cannot set... We cannot really do anything yet here, but we. what can you tell me so far? Tell me what you guys would want to do next step. Tell me what you do next. Yeah. They be, to they be equal to each other. So we could say, in, oops, I don't want to use that. Angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180. Not 180, sorry. Equals measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 8 by substitution. But that doesn't allow us to subtract anything yet. What else do we know? So step six allowed us to substitute there. What do we know? What is something we know that is in this proof above here that could help us get to two and eight being the same? Look up here. What is something else we know? Yeah. They're the same, right? So can't I replace five with three here so that it's a three on both sides? So we would say the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle eight by substitution. And that came from step five. And then I'm going to use subtraction. So the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle eight by the subtraction property of equality by subtracting three. And then how do I, what is, do I use when I switch from congruence to equals? Definition of congruent angles. Okay, so look at that one and see what questions you have for me. It's a lot, I know. And one of these is going to be on your test. Probably not the vertical angles one since it was on your last test. Just a hint. It doesn't hurt you to have a separate sheet of paper off to the side doing what we did over here on the board, okay? That doesn't hurt you. It might seem like a lot of work. I know when you guys hate doing extra work, but it would be good for you guys. That's fine. I will. I will accept it if it makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Like, that's basically what you're saying. Yeah. All right. So what can't we use in this next one here? Yes, alternate exterior. So there's nothing to define in our given information, so we're going to have to go to our diagram. We're trying to get 4 and 6 this time. We're 
going to get four and six this time. So tell me something you see in here. Tell me something you see in this diagram. Remember, they should probably involve something to do with four and six. So you can use the alternate interior angles now, and you can use vertical angles as well. We just can't use alternate exterior. One and four are linear pair. OK. How about four and two? What are those? OK. Angle four is congruent to angle two by vertical angles. What is six congruent to? Do we know anything about two and eight? Do you know anything about two and eight since we have two and eight in here? Yeah. What are they? They're alternate interior. So angle two is congruent to angle eight by alternate interior. I'm going to rewrite this so that angle eight is in the middle here for a second. OK. So what do you notice here? What do you notice about those middle pieces? This looks like the law of syllogisms, doesn't it? Do you guys remember the law of syllogisms? What is the word we use in proofs for the law of syllogisms? It starts with a T. They're transitive. What do you know because of this? Is that what we're trying to prove? You guys see that? So although what Ayana said originally was true, and we could have gotten to it using that, I wanted to show you guys a simpler way than what we did on the last proof, just to give you guys other ideas. Does that make sense? So we can use the fact that we have vertical angles here that connect to these alternate interior angles that connect to another vertical angle to prove that they're true. Because if these two are congruent, and these two are congruent, and these two are congruent, that forces those two to be congruent. So did I write really anything in my proof yet? No, notice I'm just kind of brainstorming first. It's OK to do that. Because there's a lot of information you can pull from the diagram. And the last one, we used a lot of linear pairs and consecutive interior angles, right? This one, we're not. I'm trying to get you guys to see the different vocab that you can use here. OK, so we're going to write down what we have there. So 2 would be angle 4 is congruent to angle 2. And angle 4 and 2 are what kind of angles? So we can use the vertical angle theorem now. And then we can say angle 2 is congruent to angle 8. Why are angle 2 and angle 5, or angle 2 and angle 8 congruent? Why are angle 2 and angle 8 congruent? What kind of angles are angle 2 and 8? Yeah, we know that K and L are parallel, right? And T's are transversal, so they're inside, so interior, and opposite lines, alternate. So alternate interior angles theorem. And then we said angle 8 is congruent to angle 6. Why is angle 8 congruent to angle 6? What kind of angles are those? Vertical angles. So finally, using the connection here with 2 and 2 being the same and 8 and 8 being the same, we can say 4 and 6 are the same by the transitive property. I've already told you that one of these are going to be on your test. In college, I'm sorry, I had to take proof classes where I literally had to memorize proofs for the test. Like, it wasn't even me, like, knowing, what, like, having to figure out the proof. I just had to memorize proofs. So if that's what you have to do for this test, that's fine. Granted, you guys are all not going to go on to be, math, like, math teachers or doing something with math. But that's what I had to do. Yes, I yeah. Yeah. 
you have these three can go in any order. These two would have to be the first in the line. Yeah. That's all. Any other questions? Okay, we have two more proofs to finish. So consecutive or same side interior angles theorem. So can you what can't we use? Okay, before we do this proof, though, we have to think about this. What do we have to know for things to be supplementary? What does the statement prior to this have to be for it to be supplementary? How do you know things are supplementary? What do they do? So in the step prior to this one, needs to say the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 is 180. Okay, so we know that the step prior to our final step needs to get to that. So that's where we're trying to get to in order to say that. So we're trying to say 2 and 5, so we can't use that this time. But since we have to get 180 in the problem, we are going to have to use some linear pairs in here because otherwise 180 is not even going to be in our problem. in the statement, so give me something you know from this diagram. That is, what's something you know in this diagram? Anything you know in this diagram. And it probably should involve something with 1 and 2. I mean, with 2 and 5, sorry. I said then, so one second. What are 1 and 2? What? They're not corresponding. Is that what you said? 1 and 2 form a line, so they're a linear pair. So the measure, measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 because of a linear pair. Okay, Ayana, give me something else. We know 5 and 6 are a linear pair. Is that going to help us yet? Is there anything that we can substitute in so that it says that 2 plus 5 equals 180? Is there anything we can do yet? So we wanted to get to say 2 plus 5 is 180. So is there any way to say 2 is the same as 6 or 1 is the same as 5? Do you guys see what I'm saying here? Because aren't we trying to get that 2 plus 5 is 180? So we need to replace either this with 5 or this with 2. Is there any way we can do that? Do we know something? Yeah. Which one? So the measure of... So the angle 1 is congruent to angle 5 by corresponding angles. Can we use that? Yeah, that's not what we're proving. Or what else did you say, Alana? Not Alana. Demonstration. Madison. What are the other ones? Thank you. Right? So now can't we say, do we need all of this information? So that's the next question. Do we need all that information? Every piece does that need to be in the proof. What pieces do we need? Because we don't need it all. What pieces do we need? So let's label these one, two, three, four. Which pieces do we need? Okay, so you're saying one, two, and three. So if we need, do we need all of one, two, and three, everyone? So if you know 3, 1 and 5 are the same, this replaces it with a 5. Is this even relevant anymore? So really all we need is two of them, right? Or you could have done those two, right? Because in this case, 2 is the same as 6, so that would be replaced with 2. Either way, that's saying 2 plus 5 is 180, right? Isn't that what we're trying to get to? To say they're supplementary? So do we, we can do either or, right? It doesn't matter. But you only need two pieces of that information. So you start with your given information. And I just wrote given down as the statement here. Um, K is parallel to L with T is a transversal.
And then I'm going to use measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees because of the linear pair postulate. And then I'm going to say angle 1 is congruent to angle 5 because they are the corresponding angles postulate. Hannah asked earlier, how do I know if it's a postulate or a theorem? It's called memorization. If you tell me it's a theorem when it's a postulate, I could really care less. You knew that it was corresponding angles, and that's what matters to me, okay? Again, you guys, all of you guys are not going out into the world to be mathematicians one day. I know that, okay? What matters the most is that you understand the concept behind it. Okay, you cannot use substitution when it's incongruent. So what do we need to do before we can use substitution here? Change it to equals. What do you use when you're changing it to equals? What do we use for that? Definition of um, congruent angles. Um, Sophia asked me earlier, you guys probably didn't hear her because she was right next to me, but if she can just say definition of congruence. Yes, I'm fine with that. So what are we going to substitute in for what there? What are we going to substitute in for what there, Tucker? What are we going to write in that next line? Of angle one we already have the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. So we need to use some substitution. What do we need to substitute in for measure of angle 1? Angle 1 is the same as angle... Yeah, so what can we substitute in for measure of angle 1? Yeah, so we can say the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 by substitution. So we use steps 2 and 4 to do this one. These have been from the diagram. Again, I'm just trying to write these next to it so you guys know where it came from if you go to look at this later. And then we can just say that angle 2 and angle 5 are supplementary because that's the definition of supplementary, right? If they add to 180, aren't they supplementary? And that is coming from step five. All right, we only have one more. A lot has happened today, and you guys are doing fantastic. I appreciate it. I know you guys are learning a lot of information at once. Did it help for me to go over all that stuff on the homework today? Do you feel like you're getting that stuff a little bit better? You have that stuff on the review, so make sure you try some of those problems before Friday just to make sure you don't have any of those kind of questions. Um, we'll go over some of the stuff in the review. On Friday, technically your test on Monday is over parallel, perpendicular, and writing equations of lines. I figured I wouldn't really go over much of that stuff on Friday and just kind of focus on this stuff because you guys, most of you guys got at least, most of you guys got an A on that quiz. If not in 100%, like a 15 out of 16, okay? And I'll get you guys that quiz in just a second here. So if you did not do well on that quiz, you might want to come in for help because that's what Monday's test part is over, okay? So I'll give you the quiz. Um, and if you did not do well on that, come see me, and I'll go over that quiz with you just so you guys can be prepared for the test on Monday. I'm going to try to focus mostly on this stuff on Friday, like this week's stuff, just because this is more brand new than, last, and than Monday's stuff for the test, okay? All right, last one here. We're not proving a theorem. It's giving you information and you're proving that angle 2 is equal to, or angle 5, sorry, is equal to 52 degrees.
I'm going to mark this as 128 because I know that. And I'm going to write my given information down. Always mark your diagrams. So I think on your test you have one of the theorems that you have to prove plus one proof like this. Okay, I think that's what's on your test. I'm going to look at it um, tonight or tomorrow and make sure I know by Friday. All right? Okay, so give me something you know. We can do this one pretty quickly, I think. What is something you know? If the measure of angle 3 is 128, uh, why is the measure of angle 4 128? So the vertical angle theorem. Oh, okay, one second here. We can't use the numbers right away. We have to prove, say the angles are congruent first. So, first we're going to say the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 3 because of the vertical angle theorem. So you have to use the angle things first. Um, what do you know about 4 and 5? What kind of angles are those? In consecutive interior angles, add 2. So since the measure of angle 4 is the same as the measure of angle 3, what do you guys know about the measure of angle 4? How many degrees is it? 52. So not 52. It's measure of angle 4 is the same as angle 3. So 3 and is So we can replace that with 128. Do some subtraction here. So that's substitution. And then I can subtract on both sides, and I get the measure of angle 5 equals 52 because of the subtraction property of equality. All right. 